a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Martin Shkreli Martin Shkreli is an American businessman, former hedge fund manager, and convicted, currently incarcerated felon. He is the co-founder of the hedge funds Elia Capital, MSMB Capital Management, and MSMB Healthcare co-founder, and former chief executive officer of the biotechnology firm Retrofin, and founder and former CEO of During Pharmaceuticals. Screlly is also the CEO of startup software company Girdle Systems, which he founded in August 2016. In September 2015, Screlly received widespread criticism when During obtained the manufacturing license for the antiparasitic drug Daraprim and raised its price by a factor of 56, leading him to be referred to as the most hated man in America and Pharma Bro. In December 2015, Screlly was arrested by the FBI after being indicted on federal charges of securities fraud. He subsequently resigned as CEO of During Pharmaceuticals and was replaced by the company's board chairman, Ron Tiles. Screlly was convicted of two counts of securities fraud and one count of conspiring to commit securities fraud in August 2017. Early Life Screlly was born in Coney Island Hospital, Brooklyn. His parents are Albanian immigrants from Montenegro who worked as janitors. He, his two sisters, and his brother grew up in a working-class community in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. Screlly was raised Catholic and attended Sunday school as a child. Screlly attended Hunter College High School. He dropped out before his senior year due to a lack of interest, but received the credits necessary for his diploma through a program that placed him in an internship at Wall Street hedge fund Kramer, Berkowitz & Company when he was 17. Sources differ on whether Shkreli graduated from Hunter, or whether he received sufficient credits there, but actually graduated from City as School High School. In March 2015, Hunter College High School announced that Shkreli had donated $1 million to them. Shkreli received a BBA in Finance and Economics from Baruch College in 2004. Shkreli told Vanity Fair that he developed an interest in chemistry when a family member suffered from treatment-resistant depression. Career During Shkreli's time at Kramer, Barkovitz, and company, he recommended short-selling a biotech stock, believing that the company's share price would drop. When it did so, Kramer's hedge fund profited. In 2003, Regeneron Pharmaceuticals was testing a weight-loss drug, and Shkreli, then 19, predicted that the stock price would fall. Shkreli's prediction drew the attention of the Securities and Exchange Commission, which investigated Shkreli's knowledge about the stock, but was unable to prove wrongdoing on his part. MSMB Capital Management After four years as an associate at Kramer Berkowitz, Shkreli worked as a financial analyst for Intrepid Capital Management and UBS Wealth Management. He then started his first hedge fund, Elia Capital Management, in 2006. In 2007, Lehman Brothers sued Elia in New York State Court for failing to cover a put option transaction in which Shkreli bet the wrong way on a broad market decline. When stocks rose, Shkreli didn't have the funds to make the bank whole. In October 2007, Lehman Brothers won a $2.3 million default judgment against Shkreli and Elia but Lehman collapsed before it could collect on the ruling. In September 2009, Screlly started his own business. He launched MSMB Capital Management, which took its name from the initials of the two founding portfolio managers, Screlly and his childhood friend, Marek Biastik. Screlly and Biastik shorted biotech companies, then described flaws in the companies on stock trading chat rooms. On February 1, 2011, in a naked short sale on an account it held with Merrill Lynch, MSMB Capital sold short 32 million shares of Rexogen Therapeutics stock at about $2.50 per share the day after its price plunged from $9.09. When the Food and Drug Administration declined to approve the drug Comtrev, the stock price rebounded. 
MSMB could not cover the position, although it had told Merrill Lynch that it could. Merrill Lynch lost $7 million on the trade and MSMB capital was virtually wiped out. Retroffen's 2015 SEC complaint contended Shkreli had created MSMB Healthcare and Retroffen, so that he could continue trading after MSMB Capital became insolvent and to create an asset that he might be able to use to placate his MSMB Capital investors. In 2011, Shkreli filed requests with the FDA to reject a new cancer diagnostic device from NVIDIA Biopharmaceuticals and an inhalable insulin therapy from Mankind Corporation while publicly short-selling both companies' stocks, the values of which dropped after Shkreli's interventions. The companies had difficulty launching the products as a result, although the FDA ultimately approved both. In 2011, MSMB made an unsolicited cash bid for Amag Pharmaceuticals. Matthew Herper of Forbes wrote that the attempted hostile takeover was done for the specific purpose of firing the company's management and stopping a proposed merger with Alas Therapeutics. When the merger plan stopped, so did Shkreli. Retrofin Shkreli founded Retrofin in 2011 under the MSMB umbrella, and ran it as a portfolio company with an emphasis on biotechnology, to create treatments for rare diseases. Retrofin's board decided to replace Shkreli in September 2014, and he resigned from the company the following month. He was replaced by Steve Neslage. During Shkreli's tenure as CEO, the company's employees used alias Twitter accounts to make gangster rap jokes and encourage short selling of other biotech stocks. After Shkreli's departure, Retrofin filed a lawsuit against him in August 2015, claiming that he had breached his duty of loyalty to the biopharmaceutical company in a long running dispute over his use of company funds and committed stock trading irregularities and other violations of securities rules. The lawsuit alleged that Shkreli had threatened and harassed a former MSMB employee and his family. Shkreli and some of his business associates have been under criminal investigation by the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York since January 2015. Shkreli invoked his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination in order to avoid testifying during civil depositions. Shkreli's name is on two patents held by Retroff in for drugs to treat Pkin. Views on Shkreli's leadership Critics argued that Shkreli was intelligent, but too immature and unfocused for the job of CEO. In July 2017, at Shkreli's criminal trial, Eslage testified, he's, Shkreli, a brilliant intellect, visionary. Theola Price Hike Controversy in May 2014 Retrofin acquired the rights to market Theola, a drug used to treat the rare disease Cystinaria. Shortly before Retrofin fired Shkreli, Retrofin raised the price of Theola from $1.50 to $30 per pill. Patients must take 10 to 15 pills a day. In an article titled, The Most Unconscionable Drug Price Hike I Have Yet Seen, medicinal chemist Derek Lowe wrote of the Theola action. This one enrages me and I do drug research for a living. Retrofin did not lower the price after Shkreli's departure. In February 2016 Imprimus Pharmaceuticals announced it had developed an alternative to Theola with an unspecified lower cost, and in May 2016 began selling two formulations of it. Turing Pharmaceuticals Shkreli founded Turing Pharmaceuticals in February 2015, after his departure from Retrofin. He launched Turing, with three drugs in development acquired from Retrofin, an intranasal version of ketamine for depression, an intranasal version of oxytocin, and Vecamil for hypertension. Shkreli set a business strategy for Turing, to obtain licenses on out-of-patent medicines, and re-evaluate the pricing of each in pursuit of windfall profits for the new company, without the need to develop and bring its own drugs to market. As markets for out-of-patent drugs are often small, and obtaining regulatory approval to manufacture a generic version is expensive. Turing calculated that with closed distribution for the product and no competition, it could set high prices. Darapreme Price Hike Controversy On August 10, 2015, in accordance with Shkreli's business plan, Turing acquired Darapreme, a medication approved by the FDA in 1953, from Ampax Laboratories for the drug's most prominent users of late 2015 was as an anti-malarial and an anti-parasitic, 
in conjunction with leucovrin and sulfadiazine to treat patients with AIDS-related and AIDS-unrelated doxoplasmosis. The patent for Daraprim had expired, but no generic version was available. The Turing Ampax deal included the condition that Ampax removed the drug from regular wholesalers and pharmacies, and so in June 2015, two months before the sale to Turing was announced, Ampax switched to tightly controlled distribution, in keeping with its strategy for pricing in the face of limited competition. Turing maintained the closed distribution. The New York Times noted that the deal made sense only if Turing planned to raise the price of the drug substantially. On September 17, 2015, Dave Moyo of Helio, an in-depth clinical information website for healthcare specialists, reported on a letter from the Infectious Diseases Society of America and the HIV Medicine Association to executives at Turing, questioning a new pricing for Daraprim. The price of a dose of the drug in the U.S. market increased from Tipapil, overnight, a factor of 56. The price increase was initially criticized, jointly, by the Infectious Diseases Society of America and the HIV Medicine Association, by the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, and soon thereafter by presidential candidates Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Donald Trump. A subsequent organized effort called on Turing to return pricing to pre-September levels and to address several matters relating to the needs of patients. An effort that garnered endorsements from more than 160 medical speciality and patient-related organizations. In response to the controversy, the record label Collect Records publicly ended its business relationship with Shkreli, who had invested in the company. In a September 2015 interview with Bloomberg Markets, Shkreli claimed that despite the price increase, patient co-pays would actually be lower, that many patients would get the drug at no cost that Turing had expanded its free drug program, and that it sold half of its drugs for one dollar. He defended the price hike by saying, if there was a company that was selling an Aston Martin at the price of a bicycle, and we buy that company, and we asked to charge Toyota prices, I don't think that that should be a crime. A few days later, Screlly announced that he planned to lower the price by an unspecified amount, in response to the anger that was felt by people. But in late November, Turing reversed course, and said it would not lower the price after all. Following a request by Senator Bernie Sanders and Rep. Elijah Cummings, for details of Turing Pharmaceuticals finances and price-setting practices in September 2015, the company hired four lobbyists from Buchanan, Ingersoll and Rooney with backgrounds in healthcare legislation and pharmaceutical pricing. In addition to lobbyists, Screlly hired a crisis public relations firm to help explain the pricing decision. On October 22, 2015, Mark L. Baum, CEO of Imprimus Pharmaceuticals, announced that his company would provide a combination product containing pyrimethamine and leucovarine at $1 a pill, as a cheaper and more efficient alternative to Daraprim. This product is intended to be used alongside sulfadiazine in the standard protocol to treat doxoplasmosis typically seen in AIDS patients, Baum noted. This is not the first time a sole supply generic drug especially one that has been approved for use as long as Dara Previs had its price increased suddenly and to a level that may make it unaffordable. He announced the availability of the compounded replacement for Dara Prima as a part of a larger corporate program, Imprimus Cares, to make novel and customizable medicines available to physicians and patients at accessible prices. Imprimus is now offering its compounded, orally taken formulations of pyrimethamine and leucovarin beginning at for a 100-count bottle, essentially a dollar a dose. On November 23, 2015, Turing announced that the company would not reduce the list price of Daraprim, but said it planned instead to negotiate volume discounts of up to 50% for hospitals. Turing issued a statement that it was not as important to cut the list price as to reduce the cost to hospitals, where most patients get their initial treatment. The company pledged that no patient needing Daraprim would ever be denied access. Infectious disease specialists and patient advocates, including Tim Horn of the Treatment Action Group and Carlos Del Rio of the HIV Medicine Association, said Turing's actions were insufficient, given that patients initially treated for days at a hospital typically have to continue the treatment for weeks or months after leaving. Kalo Bios Pharmaceuticals in November 2015, 
an investor group led by Shkreli acquired a majority stake in Kalo Bios Pharmaceuticals, a biopharmaceutical company based in South San Francisco, California. Shkreli was named CEO of the company and also planned to continue in the role of CEO of During Pharmaceuticals. After his December 2015 arrest, Kalo Bios Pharmaceuticals terminated him as CEO. On December 29, 2015, Kalo Bios filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This followed Nasdaq delisting its shares, and the resignation of two directors. Girdle Systems Inc. Screlly founded Girdle Systems in August 2016 as a professional software company that aims to be the leading information provider of data, workflow, and communication solutions for financial, law, and scientific professionals. By February 2017 Girdle Systems was looking to raise $1 million through a debt offering, and had raised $50,000 out of the $1 million in debt it began issuing in mid-January 2017, according to regulatory filings. Ralph Holzman, a former senior engineer at Twitter, is the firm's chief technology officer. Testimony before Congress Screlly was subpoenaed to appear before the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform of the U.S. House of Representatives to answer questions about the Dara Prime price increase. Screlly's efforts to quash the subpoena were unsuccessful. On February 4, 2016, Screlly appeared before the House Committee, along with Nancy Ratzloff, the Chief Commercial Officer of During, and Howard B. Schiller, the interim CEO of Valiant. Shkreli followed his lawyer's advice and refused to answer any questions, except to confirm his name including those related to his acquisition of the most expensive music album ever made be exercising his Fifth Amendment rights. On the same day, Shkreli wrote a public message on Twitter reading, hard to accept that these imbeciles represent the people in our government, and later he took to the internet saying he was willing to take questions from the public that he'd refused to answer before Congress justifying his position by accusing the congressmen of being motivated purely by self-interest. Criminal Prosecution and Conviction On December 17, 2015, Screlly was arrested by the FBI after a federal indictment in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York was filed, charging him with securities fraud. The charges were filed after an investigation into his tenure at MSMB Capital Management and Retrofin. He was accused of running a Ponzi-like scheme. Federal prosecutors said that Shkreli engaged in multiple schemes to ensnare investors through a web of lies and deceit. In an interview with The Wall Street Journal, Shkreli said that he was targeted by law enforcement for his price hikes of the drug Daraprim and his flamboyant personality. In early 2016, Shkreli retained criminal defense attorney Benjamin Braffman to defend him. At his 2017 trial, Shkreli argued that none of his investors actually lost money and thus his actions did not constitute a crime. Shkreli's frequent criticisms of the federal prosecutors in New York's Eastern District, whom he called Junior Varsity, compared to their counterparts in the Southern District across the East River, both on his Facebook streaming video feed and in the hallways of the courthouse, led those prosecutors to request that Judge Kyo A. Matsumoto issue a gag order to prevent what they called a Campaign of disruption. Brathman claimed in response that his client was responding to baiting from the media and was also suffering from extreme anxiety because of his situation. Matsumoto ordered Shkreli not to speak with the reporters, either in the courthouse or its immediate vicinity. On August 4, 2017, the trial jury found Shkreli guilty on two counts of securities fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit securities fraud, and not guilty on five other counts. Screlly said he was delighted with the outcome and described his prosecution as a witch hunt of epic proportions. On September 13, 2017, his bail was revoked following a Facebook post offering $5,000 for a strand of Hillary Clinton's hair which the judge perceived as solicitation to assault which is not protected under the First Amendment. Shkreli's post was preceded by others that suggested he might have plans to clone Hillary Clinton. Shkreli said that his post was satire, and his lawyer described it as tasteless, but not a threat. Shkreli edited the post to add a disclaimer that it was satire, and later said he did this minutes after publication. Shkreli apologized for the post, 
was sent to the Metropolitan Detention Center, Brooklyn while awaiting sentencing. Shkrilis sentencing hearing has been postponed several times, and is currently set for March 9, 2018. In 2018, following his conviction, federal prosecutors are seeking criminal forfeiture of $7.3 million of Shkrilis assets, including cash and other valuables. Shkreli is opposing the government's request. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?